Hej och välkomna allihopa. Vi är tillbaka med Svenska basketklassiker. Jag heter Johannes Wåhlert och med mig här har jag Paul Nilsen, en av världens bästa dambasketexperter. Uh, welcome Paul to, to this edition of Swedish Classical Games. It's great to be here. Thanks for having me on. Uh, really excited to talk about one of the best games I've been at um, in my memory. Uh, before we start off with uh, this uh, game Sweden-France in the 2013 European Championships, uh, can you just you know, talk a little bit about yourself, um, who you are and uh, what you're doing in, in the world of basketball? Yeah, I'm uh, what you would call a women's basketball warrior. Um, I love to um, fight the cause for women's basketball. Um, I live and breathe uh, women's basketball. Um, I just think it's such a great thing and I love to promote the athletes um, at all levels from young players, obviously to senior and elite players like we have at these big tournaments. Um, got a great respect for, for Swedish basketball, know quite a few players, some of them big favourites of mine. And uh, basically I cover for FIBA um, and a few other sites as the uh, the women's basketball specialist. Great. Um, let's go back to 2013. We're in France. Um, Sweden qualified for this European Championships for the first time since 1987. Uh, they were they beat Spain twice in the qualifiers, uh, which earned them this place. Uh, can you just you know give us and and the viewers a little you know, um, overview of this tournament, you know, who were the big players and, and what your impressions of this tournament was? Yeah, I think um, one of the, the biggest things was obviously France being the home team, being very strong. I think France had won in 2009, so four years earlier. So I think the expectation was with a great team um, and also the home support, that they would be one of the favourites. Um, and as it turned out, they obviously got to the final. I think Swede, um, I think Spain, obviously being stung from the qualifications, had a, a big point to prove. And they had naturalised Sancho a little, which gave them a great defensive presence. So they were always going to be a favourite. Um, and as it turned out, uh, those are the two teams that obviously made the final. Um, And of course, Spain won it in a great final. And in terms of the competition generally, I look back on it with great memories because the size of the arenas were great for women's basketball, um, just the right size. Um, the one for the final phase in Oshi, um, which is where this brilliant France-Sweden game took place, was um, about 5,000 people. Um, great fans, the French fans in Sweden always have a great following. Um, I was with Sweden in the group stages, um, had lots of fans inside um, the first venue. So I think overall, when you look back at the tournament, it was one of the best um, FIBA Women's Eurobasket tournaments that I can remember um, since I got involved with, with, with FIBA. So I look at it with a big smile and especially this game. We're, we're going to uh, bypass the group stage where, where you saw Sweden play. Obviously, Sweden beat Russia in that, and we've seen that game already. Um, now we are uh, at the quarterfinals. Sweden has traveled to, to Orchis or Lille, uh, where uh, they'll be meeting the, I mean, obviously the big favorite home nation, um, France, in front of more than 5,000 fans. Uh, you were at the game. Um, just tell us, you know, your experience of, of this game. A classic, classic situation. You have the home favourites, packed, full house of fans, a good following, as I say, from Sweden, the underdogs. I think heading into the tournament, um, I kind of said, why can't Sweden have a deep run? But I think even they may have been surprised that here they were in a quarter final of a major tournament. And I think, as you said, it was almost 30 years since they kind of played. 
huge opportunity ahead. Um, I think when you look down the French roster, uh, Yakubu, Miem, uh, Gruda, uh, Lawson, Wade, Dumer, there's so many great players. Um, but you know Sweden, some, some great players too. So I remember heading into this game, the main thing for me was about the small details, but I could never have expected uh, the kind of game that happened. Um, obviously, there was a lot of focus on the Elderbrink sisters. Um, they obviously set the tone, controlling the tempo, um, going up and down, making shots, particularly Frida. Um, and Sweden had naturalised Ashley Key, obviously, and she was a great um, threat from outside. So actually, while Sweden were underdogs, um, and I'm sure the staff and the coach of Sweden at the time would have thought this, they had to play at the very top level to even have a, any kind of a chance because they were underdogs. But my feeling going into it was France might just have too much, but I really don't think Sweden could have done any more. It, it was, I don't know, it was such, just such a great game. Uh, what, what would you describe as, as were there decisive moments or decisive plays in these games? We are, you know, obviously going to watch this game soon and uh, tomorrow, whenever we air this. Um, could could you pick out, you know, from your memory, uh, some decisive uh, plays or moments? Yeah, I mean, if, what we'll say first of all is, um, I think for a lot of fans, they look at the score and think, "Hang on, my team lost. Why? Why would I want to watch?" A game when my team didn't win. But if there was ever a time for a fan to watch their team who almost won but just played so great, then this is the game. Because you will see during this game that it's end to end, it is relentless. And every time France asked a question, Sweden responded. Every time Sweden got up, France responded. And it went down to the last few minutes. And basically, without it being a plot spoiler, um, a, a world-class player in Celine Dumerc was basically the difference between two teams. And I think as Sweden probably left the court at the end of this game, everybody was on their feet. Everybody, the Swedish fans, the French fans, and people like me, the neutral, the neutral who just thought that is probably one of the best adverts for women's basketball that I've ever seen and I think the staff of Sweden will probably look so proudly on the, their players and sometimes you just have to accept that a world-class player is the difference um, because Dumerk made a few shots down the stretch which tipped the balance in France's favour. Uh, you, you were at the game. I, I mean, we heard some voices afterwards because what happened, Sweden had a game the night after against Belarus and were completely out of it. Um, that effectively made Sweden, you know, lose a spot in the World Cup the next year. Uh, some people say, well, they shouldn't have really have, you know, competed in this game. They should have just focused on the next game against Belarus or whatever to, to clinch a spot in the World Cup. Um, when at the game you were there, like, in the, were there? Did you think Sweden was able to win at any point? In in the in the French game, or you mean the yeah, games after? Yeah, in, in the French game. In the French game, yeah. I mean, there there was moments heading down the stretch with a few minutes to go, where it was all about execution. But you know yourself, and the fans know. Every time there's like a miss, you think, oh. And then there's a basket down the other end. And it just felt in those last few minutes that it would come down to somebody making that big shot. Um, and actually, during the game, I was thinking, I wonder if they'll get the ball in Frida's hands or whether they'll pass it to Ashley um, for an outside shot. Um, so you, you always thought that the possibility, if it was close, it could go either way. And, of course, the scores both um, in the 80s in, in a quarter final of a major tournament in women's basketball. Yeah. That is really, I mean, they were just on fire, both teams. Yeah. Um, so th that was the joy of it for me. Um, it's just a great game of basketball. And I think the most 
disappointing thing was that it took so much out of Sweden, mentally and physically, which actually it was a very harsh punishment for them in the following two games um, that they couldn't get their place uh, for the Worlds um, because it had taken that much out of them. Uh, if we, I mean, you've you've since then, or maybe before then even, but you know, since then you've come out as you know quite a, a fan of the Swedish basketball women's team. Um, what did impress you most with this team in 2013? I think they had they had such a great team spirit. Um, so they had all of the different elements: a good coach, good team spirit, um, a good staff. They had um, people who played with each other since the youth ranks, so the elder brinks, um, and then you also had that new addition in Ashley, who gave a bit of a, of a dynamic flavour, a third dimension. Um, and then I, I have to mention uh, Anna Barthold because every team needs the warriors who do the dirty work, um, and obviously that's not being disrespectful to her. You need somebody to stand and fight with Yakubu and Niem. Um, so, they, you know, this team had all of the elements. Maybe what they didn't have was that one world-class player. Um, you know, Frida and Ellen are top-class players, but I think even they would admit someone like Dumas is, you know, one of a handful of truly, truly great players. So, like I say, sometimes you just have to tip your hat and say, you know, we were beaten by a very, very slightly better team. Um, but they couldn't have done any more. And I think if you walk off the court as an athlete and you couldn't have done any more, then, you know, that's the way it is. Uh, thank you very much, Paul, for, for being with us. No worries. Thanks a lot. Enjoy.